Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in today. I had a question about um, how silicone masks are made, um, the mold making process, and specifically how 3D printing can be used to aid in that process. So I thought the easiest way to do that would be to describe it with a drawing. So here we go. Um, silicone mask making is different from latex mask making. So normally with a latex mask, you would have your um, clay sculpt um, in, in like a soft clay. And then a plaster mold is made, usually like a, fr a front part of the mold and a back part of the mold. And the reason why you use plaster is um, you can separate it. Now you've got your two plaster halves and you can pull the clay out because it was soft, right? And then what you do is you join the two halves back together, bolt it or strap it together. You pour liquid latex in and the latex creates a skin, okay, as it sort of, um, as the, um, I believe it's like ammonia or something that's or moisture that's pulled into the plaster and then you pour out the remaining liquid plaster and then you let it dry and then you get a latex skin that's how a latex monster mask is made for silicone it's a slightly different process so let's just pretend for a second that you have a life cast all right and um you're going to be sculpting on top of that so um in particular someone was asking about cad bane um uh, mask or how to make that so normally you would take a life cast and then you would sculpt in clay what you want your creature or monster or whatever to look like. Um, and in this case, it's an all-in-one, one-piece, um, it's going to be an all-in-one, one-piece silicone mask. So you normally you would do your clay sculpt, and then you would make your mold, okay? And so the mold is going to be different. It's not going to be plaster. It's probably done uh, in epoxy or uh, urethane or some other mold-making material. Um, because you cannot use silicone and you wouldn't use plaster, you would use um, a different material for, for um, being able to pour in the silicone afterwards. So again, it's, it would be done as a front and back half, right? You would clay up this side and then you would create your, your uh, mold for the front of the face. You would remove your wall and then you would um, probably apply a mold release and then you would do the other side. You would also incorporate a pore spout for the silicone and you would have registration keys around the base. You would have probably have holes and bolts that will bolt the, the two sides together, okay? So after you've made your mold, you take it apart, you remove all the clay and then you would end up with this void in between, okay? And um, there's a whole bunch of details I'm skipping out, you know, in terms of like, you might wanna register areas like the eyes, you might wanna have areas that are inset like the mouth to create a mouth pocket. Um, you might wanna have ventilation holes on high spots, et cetera. There's a whole bunch of other stuff that needs to go on. I'm just trying to give you an overview of the process. But after your mold's made, you bolt it all back together. And again, this is like a hard uh, shell mold, you know, urethane or whatever. And then you would pour in your silicone and in this case for a Cad Bane, it would be like tinted blue, like a light blue. And it would fill up from the bottom. And then eventually it would fill up on the top. And as it cures, you'd end up with like some extra silicone here. You would, um, as you remove your mold, you could cut that off. Okay. And then when you remove your mold, you end up with your one piece silicone mask. Now it's all fine and dandy. The question was, can you use 3D printing? Like for example, if you had a 3D print of a Cad Bane face, could you potentially use that for, you know, making your, your master sculpt? Now, you you can't do that in the same way. You, you couldn't just take a hard, um, say, PLA or resin print, glue it onto this bust, blend in the edges with clay or whatever, and then make your, your mold um, like that. And the reason is because your 3D print is probably hard, it's rigid, and there's no way you're going to be able to have a hard shell mold on a hard shell surface. You can't extract the original sculpt. The reason, the reason why it was originally done in clay is, of course, clay is soft and malleable and you can pull it out. You can clean out the mold. So it can't really be done in that way. Now, could it be done? Potentially, yes, um, in the sense that, let's say, for example, I, I've done sort of simpler um, molds like this where... Um, I've used like an FDM, uh, just PLA filament print, and then I could like heat it up with heat gun to like soften it and actually like extract it and pull it out. Now, the problem is that if there's any um, undercuts or, you know, areas that might trap um, the hard mold, 
it's never going to release, right? And you might end up damaging the mold. So that's not a great way to do it. Again, it depends on the design. If you had a really smooth um, uh, design, maybe you could extract it successfully. You know, obviously you're going to be damaging the original master sculpt anyway, so you're going to be throwing away that print. But, you know, again, it just depends on the design and how detailed it is. Detailed areas like a mouth pocket or eyes or wrinkles, it might trap. Um, and uh, you're not going to be able to remove the, the mold. Now, another way to do it would be if you th actually 3D printed the um, mold itself. So I've seen stuff where people have like a 3D model of the um, design that they want to do, and then what they do is in ZBrush or Blender or some other piece of software, they would actually um, create this negative mold portion as a 3D model, and you can incorporate all the registration keys, you can incorporate holes, you can incorporate pore spouts, you can incorporate ventilation holes. So really what you're doing is actually printing um, just the mold itself. Now, that's awesome, okay? Um, there are a couple issues with that. If you could do a resin print, um, printed mold, the inside would be, you know, very smooth and that would yield a great result. Now you have to have a resin printer that's gonna be able to print um, a fairly large mold, okay? Like quite gigantic. Um, and there are big resin printers. They're obviously very expensive. You could do that as a service. That's absolutely a way to do it. Um, I've also um, seen and experimented with smaller molds, n not a full head, but like where I've done FDM printed um, molds. Now that can work too, but the problem of course is inside, you're probably gonna have print lines. You might have, um, maybe there's areas that need to be supported. You're gonna have some rough texture in there. So then now you're gonna have to smooth out the inside of that mold. Um, again, totally possible. Um, it might not be as precise when you do that because now you're sort of um, touching it and, and modifying it. You might get irregularities between the front and back half of the mold. Can it be done? Absolutely. I've seen people do it um, for like creatures and puppets and that sort of thing. And again, you know, if you don't mind uh, a little bit of print line texture, um, oops, it's absolutely possible. Um, but uh, again, you could post-process it potentially. So those are ways that you could incorporate 3D printing to, to make um, either the mold or the master. Again, it completely depends on the design of your character or the object that you're intending to mold. For a mask, it's probably going to be best if you attempted to do the um, 3D printed mold itself and not the actual uh, master. That's probably the best way to do it. All right, so I hope that helps you out and just gives you an overview of that process. Um, yeah, thanks for tuning in.